Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna hop into that final series right now. Right now, yes. In fact, <laughs> joke's on you, we're already eight minutes into it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, uh, Jeff. They start without us. So what happened here real quick, Haswabs did lose his natural. Uh, but as you can see, the natural just now goes down for Deers. It's a bit of an exchange. Looks like we had Blink versus Stargate play, kind of classic. And things are calming down. Isn't it, wouldn't it, you were just, uh, maybe it was just to me, but you were saying one of the disadvantages to StarCraft II streams is that they start off kind of the same way, very boring. You yeah, know. we just went straight into the, the action part. There you the go, Hot Soaps is already fighting. Boom. You guys are not going to watch probes, uh, mining, and these, oh. op these boring opening builds. Uh, straight into the action, and actually uh, Deer with a big Stalker contain and Hot Soaps with two Void Rays, kind of pushing forward very far. Do you think he can actually do this? Isn't this a little bit ballsy? The further out he gets, the, the more ballsy it gets, yes. And by ballsy, I mean bad. He's going to dead. do what he can. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, oh, the mind. Phoenix. Nice. He does have Phoenix in the background, so that's pretty okay. Uh, still think he's in a lot of trouble, but... Yeah, more Stalkers being warped in, and actually one Void Raid goes down, and the second Void Raid being targeted immediately, and there's still so many Stalkers left over. More Stalkers coming in from hostiles, but they're on move command, or actually they're targeting the Stalkers in the back, nicely blinked away by Deer, and Deer's going to get the better end of this trade, yep. and actually GG! Hey that was quick. Hey. So uh, we just got in there for the meat and potatoes of this match, guys. Uh, how we got there would have been nice to know, but they started a little bit without us. That's okay, though. It was a Phoenix opening against Forgate Blink and uh, too should many stalkers, him, Should we man? tell him to replay it, do you think? I don't think Deer would agree with That's this. That's what I would do with the... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. That'd I mean, they, sh they should know not to start without the casters. That's okay, guys. We'll, we'll hop in for the meaningful game. That was the one that set the scene. So now Hasuab's down by one. Can yes. he come back? Ooh. And this is everything, man. Like, I was uh, speculating earlier, like, Hasuab's had a really nice run taking out Linok and Jadong. And now he's down 0 1 against Deer, and it could all be for nothing. Uh, in this but last game, down to the wire and for the He can take some solace in that if you don't win this tournament, everything is actually for nothing. <laughs> That's true. Like, he's going to make, if he loses now, he's going to make just as yeah. much money as the guy who finishes second, second place. Second place. Brutal. So. Absolutely brutal. So we're going to hop into game number two, and this time I promise you we won't miss a beat. You'll get to see all those probes, mine, the builds, and uh, the what haves you used at the beginnings. There we go. It's been a long day. Again, just a big shout out to everyone for tuning in. We've had a great audience. Did we ever break the 40,000 producer, man? I think we got up to 39.5 during that last 40? series. Well, it's broke 40. That's not... not Let's if you count the German stream... Hey, eh, we did. Let's just say we did. All right, we broke 40,000. There's probably a, you know some number on Russian stream or something like that. So thank you, guys. Aw awesome audience for the open bracket. Uh, the heat only turns up, as Rhett was saying, uh, before, af after we conclude the last series. Tomorrow, round of 16, no bad matchup there. No bad matchup. If you're uh, a little bit sad because you're like, I don't want to watch Mr. Snoobers play. That's fine. Round of 16, not Scoobers. a single one. Scoobers? <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, there's not a single one of those. It's all going to be super intense, awesome matchups. So I can't, cannot wait. And it only escalates from there as we finally build up to a $100,000 winner takes all. I need an invite. Ah. You need an invite? There you go. I Got am real-life friends with Hustle Up, so I'm getting into this game. Shout out to my friends at the Evil Genius's office. They're watching this on a... Big projector bought with blood money from eSports. Everything is bigger in America, right? Uh, just just at the EG offices. We're like the Texas of America eSports. Yeah, everything's bigger. You guys are like the Yankees of eSports. We're like the Yankees, the Braves, uh, the Mariners when they were good before they sucked total total amount of ass. Uh, Did you just call your own team management bad? Mariners? Oh, the Mariners. Before. Not ah. Oh, yeah. When we had Lou Pinella... Jay Buhner, Ken Griffey Jr., Alex Rodriguez before he became an egomaniac. Yeah, we had a great team. It was awesome. Dan Wilson. This is going over so many people's yeah, heads. Yeah, like mostly Europeans are watching this, so no, like, nobody understands. Shut it. In this is what I hate about him. Talks about hand egg too Just much. Just compare it to Real Madrid. That's like the same. Uh, it's like, I can do that. Um, this is like do you know any? Do you David know any? Beckham was good. This was a long Before time ago. Do you know any, any of the current best soccer players at all? Pele, still kicking ass at age 68. <laughs> still doing good. He's a great He's a great Ronaldo, uh, when he lifts up just the bottom, the midriff, I'm, I'm a big fan. Big <laughs> fan of that. He has the cutest little belly button. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, uh, it's good looking. A lot of, a lot Who's of girls. your favorite soccer team? Uh, uh, Manchester United, normally. Karmic, if Karmic's matching, 
watching He Will Kill Me because he likes Liverpool. He but, doesn't uh, actually watch esports. Yeah. He just runs it. He's building stages He's and stuff. Yeah, no, he doesn't even do that. He, he pays people to do that. Um, mostly, he just pretends to be a bad interviewer from a different country. Yes. And then Which gave him a lot of success. So it was a good concept. Yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, those, those YouTube videos got a few views. He did pretty okay. He thought they were hilarious. Uh, let's go ahead and get in the game. We are on Frost. It's a four-player map. And uh, just to remind you, in our Blitzkrieg round number one, Deer did take that 35-second match that we got to watch, we got to peek in on. Speaking of Deer, he's the blue Protoss from Team Maus down in the lower right-hand side. Yes, and his opponent uh, currently trailing 0-1 and probably feeling the pressure and also must be feeling a little bit fatigued after a whole day of playing. And he's going to have to give it his all to come back against his monster. It's uh, Maus Hasuaps. A little bit of a team kill, but this is the, the good kind of a team kill when it's at the end of a tournament and you both have done awesome. Okay, you have allowed yourselves to do that. Yeah, and no matter what, one of these mouse guys is going to make it to the open bracket, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that whoever it is, the other person will probably be coaching and cheering for them because these guys do definitely seem to be sharing builds a lot. They've been playing pretty <laughs> much the same way in, uh, in all of the PVZs we saw from them. Uh, but so far, Deer having the upper hand, and I think also Deer probably considered the favorite here against Hasuops, but... Hasselops has so much PvP experience against uh, Sokka and just yeah. UPS that he's definitely a, a very strong PvP player. Hasselops has been around forever competing with the Koreans. I mean, I, I remember back into the early seasons of NASL where I would commentate Hasselops against, like, MC and... Uh, who, gosh, a couple of those guys actually faded away. It was Ensnare, and Snare was a Terran. Anyways, I don't want to waste too much time with my terrible memory, but he's been doing it for a while, is I guess the point I'm trying to make. Being on big stages against uh, really strong Korean Protosses. It's just kind of funny because Hasswabs is just outside of being a kick-ass great German player, kind of a quiet fellow. You know, he, he has pretty funny tweets. He, he has his own podcast that he was doing for a while at least uh, that people really, really did enjoy. But outside of that, he's, he's a very quiet, respectful fellow um, who just kind of silently over the last, I don't know, four or five years since Wings Literally came out, just been earning yeah. $80,000. Constantly successful, uh, maybe not at the very, very top level but just under that in European scene, always uh, consistent. And so far, actually, about the game, I, they're pretty much doing the same build. They're both going for uh, that double gas. And going back to some of the PvPs we casted about 10 hours ago, mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh, Stargate openings, I think, on this map. Uh, Deer going the map, for the, the more you'll see that. Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix and Oracle can traverse the map very quickly. And if you are not going Stargate yourself, one Oracle just outside your base will keep you pinned, basically. So it's kind of a very powerful tool to be used. But we'll see Deer going with the Twilight Council, and on the flip side, we see Twilight Council as well from Haswab. So Yeah, so so far these guys are pretty much exact clones of each other. Uh, Deer, also the same probe mm. count, and pretty much the exact same build so far. The uh, probe did not spot the Twilight Council. It does see three probes on the gas, so... The read should be, you are not one gate expanding, you are probably doing something else, something either Stargate or Twilight Council of that variety. Not many people go one base Robo, that's a pretty bad build in general. Uh, and then on the flip side, we do have Hasuab's pausing outside of the natural at the tower. That's wise, because of the timing of his scout, he would just die to a mothership or a stalker. And look at that, Deer actually going for a super fast uh, Dark Shrine here, and if Hasuab is not careful, wow, he's doing the same thing, same they're thing. pretty much doing the same build against each other, and... This is a total coin flip at this point, right? Like, What should happen is they should be both doing the build where the robo goes down uh, in a few moments here and actually is in time to detect the DTs. And they're both getting pylons uh, outside of each other's bases, and now the, the searching for pylons commences. Uh. And Hasselop's actually moving his stalker to the watchtower. We'll find his stalker of deer coming towards him. And actually, deer is going to try to make it into the main base. This mothership core is trailing. Will it get there in time? To oh, uh, the pauses. probe stops. And yeah, Deer will not actually scout anything. No. Well, that robo that I was talking about, there it is for Hasuobs. Um, it's a bit quicker for Deer, actually. And yeah, it goes Deer's down to also got them. a sentry. And, and Deer Hasuobs also doesn't. has a slightly faster Dark Shrine that would complete in time. Uh, actually, it's kind of far out of the way. So, you know, Hasuobs should be fine. Uh, typically, you would have a sentry or two. He's playing pretty greedy. You can see he's got a good 300 gas stockpiled there, but not spending any of the money on sentries. Yeah, and Deer doesn't actually have the gateways to more warp in more than one DT, whereas Hasuobs is actually going to have the ability to warp in two DTs at the same time. Oh, and this DT found. is already on the way. And Look at that. It's even in the same spot. Like, both their pylons are in the same freaking location. And now Deer actually finds the pylon. He probably sees the DTs for sure. He's going to be able to sentry the ramp. 
On the other hand, Deer just gets into the base immediately, and the Observer is just now being Chrono Boosted, yeah. and Deer's going to get so many probe kills, or at least take off so many mining time. And there's the Force Field, perfectly gets it on his own ramp, and his Observer is already done, so he will not likely take any damage. He even tries to trap, but does miss Force Field by just a little bit. Both the TT DTs, excuse me, will make their way out of here. So obviously Deer getting the better exchange here, having uh, killed a couple of probes and a lot of missed mining time, but he does lose his DT in exchange for that, so it's, it's comparable, I would say. Um, but the two DTs of, of uh, Hasselhoff's are going to pull back, and, and really they're, they're not going to have much in the way of a roll. They're just basically going to be out there to say, okay, you at least have to leave behind uh, an observer or, or budget yourself so you can make one. Uh, other than that, they're going to go around looking for pylons and grab towers, that kind of thing. Yeah, and overall, even though Deer did get some mining time, he did lose his DT, and uh, Hasobs didn't, so Hasobs will be able to get a faster Archon if he wants. Right. And uh, also, the Nexus are pretty much finishing a little bit faster for Hasobs, so whatever he lost in the early game, he can catch up right now by having a bit faster double pro production. And actually, it's not looking that bad at all for Hasobs. Uh, and now no, he's just about gonna, the same. Gonna, he's got a Warpism already. They both built a forge at roughly the same time. Hasselhoff is going to trail a little bit. They're both building immortals. Um, my snide remark earlier about Hasselhoff's not uh, speaking with Deer and maybe just stealing his builds is becoming a little bit... I mean, unless the level of stealing that's happening here is, is like every build, it's starting to look more like what you were saying, which uh, maybe Deer has taken Hasselhoff's under his wing a little bit and helped him out, because they're doing the exact same build right now. Actually, exactly. I really like this uh, Warpism variation, but Deer saw the Warpism flying by his pylon, so he knows it's coming. He's actually got some units ready in the main base. And here the DT goes into the natural. At the same time, the Warpism goes into the main, but Deer is so on top of it. Look at that. He just yep. chases it away instantly. But it's and not bad for Hasselhoff's. You know, Hasselhoff's doesn't lose the DT for that, so yeah, he doesn't get any damage done, but what he gets to do now is say, hey, if you want to leave, now you have to have an Observer probably at both your natural and your main. Um, and with that Warp Prism out there, as long as it doesn't die uselessly, which would be really silly, uh, it's a really powerful tool even beyond that. Warping in a couple of Zealots and then oh, dropping look at them that. on Deer the main. somehow got a DT in the Hasselhoff's main main with his own Warp Prism. They're actually yeah. doing the exact same thing completely. And one thing that is different is the, the, the gases on the natural for Deer were taken much faster. So he's got a much bigger gas bank and he's also getting his Robotics Bay a bit sooner, so he's most likely going to be able to get more gas expensive oh. units. Hasselhoff's natural is in disarray, by the way. There's a whole bunch of vital oh, wow. probes, and now a DT cutting up some probes. Uh. <coughs> so they are doing the same thing, but right now Deer is executing at a little Just bit a of a little level. Just a little bit better, yes. Uh, although two DTs now have died. And, and another one, one more DT makes it into the main, yeah. And this is going up to like 10 probe kills, so this is actually turning out to be a big deal, and now Deer is six probes ahead, yeah. getting a faster Colossus. Uh, when he wants. Getting yeah. plus two faster as well. He's Deer's just taking a small advantage through like little things that he's doing slightly better than Hasselhoff's is. But in these PvPs, I'll tell you, small advantages become quite large uh, because they both have the same tools at their at their hands. It looks like there will be a, a potential divergence in builds here. I, I want to say Hasselhoff's is going to end up going the Charge Lot Archon Immortal style. Whereas Deer has very clearly gone into the faster Colossus. Uh, but because of the economic damage that we see even more of happening here at the natural from Deer, um, I feel like the weakness of the Colossus opening versus this, that, that timing is going gonna, is gonna to close and, and shrink because uh, Hasselhoff is spending this time recuperating his losses. Yeah, and Deer's already getting a second Colossus right now. There was a probe earlier for Deer trying to take the, Ooh, the no third. One. There was a DT there. And now Deer is just going to look to probably take a third base and... He's already up uh, about 15 supply throughout all this little harass that he's doing with his DT. He's went up to 13 probe kills, but Hasselhoff's will take his third base at the same time. And I feel like Deer, when he wants to, with that plus two uh, advantage that he has, he's going to have a nice timing, but I'm not sure if he's going to realize it. He's going to try to kill another pylon here, just being really, really annoying. And whopping in these Stalkers might seem like a good idea to fend off this Warpism, but realistically, you don't want to spend nope. your money on three Stalkers exactly right. going into the mid game. Exactly right, my friend. Um they were, they were nice as an attempt to maybe push away a lazy warp prism if it uh, just stays in flower mode or whatever and, and doesn't pick up. It's a nice way to pick it off. But otherwise, these four stalkers now, they're dead weight for the most part. You would gladly exchange them for stalkers, or excuse me, for, ze for zealots and, uh, of course, have that gas better be spent on things like Immortals, Archons, and Colossus. Yeah, and also Hasselhoff still has not seen that he's actually playing against Colossus, so this might come as a bit of a surprise. And right now, uh, Deer is adding... Uh, Two more gateways for a total of seven. 
So it might seem like he realizes that he's going to have a nice timing uh, coming up. Uh, he's also getting plus three really fast. And uh, everything is looking rather good. Uh, the first Colossus for Hasselops is not even done. He doesn't have uh, range on the way. And everything else looks pretty much the same, but Deer just slightly in the lead with the plus three much faster, the charge faster. Yep. It's a shame because... Still more probes as well. I mean, when you do the same build as your opponent, and your opponent is some kind of mega Protoss like Deer, you know, you're probably in, in, in kind of bad shape. And that's what's ended up happening here. Hasselops is an absolutely amazing Protoss. Uh, but what he probably needed to happen in, in this PvP was he was doing a different build than Deer, and he would gain advantages from potentially what that build offers. But when you're doing the same build as Deer, and you're hoping to out-execute Deer, uh, that's a, I mean, that's a practice in, in fealty or futility, excuse me. And look at this. Once again, the Warpism comes into the main. There's a cannon Dropping there. right on top of it. But he'll get in there. At the same time, he's going to push at the front with three Colossus. And Hasselops has three Immortals, one Colossus. And I think this is a scary fight for Hasselops right here. There's also about 10 supply behind. And here they go, he's just running in. And this is a, a ramp that Hasselops has to go down. And that time warp, if he goes in there, he's just going to get melted by those Colossus. Good patient play, though, so far. He's using the... There we go. Now he's actually target firing with that Photon Overcharge. But the range, or the lack of range, excuse me, on his Colossus, costing him dearly. It just dies. And now, while he did have three Immortals, you can notice he's down to just the one. And uh, Deer's going to just pick and prod at this. Now, he has the Colossus. He's always had the Colossus advantage, but now it's a, it's gone on to be a severe advantage. War Prism in the main was being a nuisance, but was defended quite well. Uh, by the German Protoss, but that's it. And actually, look at this. Hasselhoff's going to take advantage of the fact that he notices, hey, you don't have detection, so I'm going to yeah. buy myself some time, actually. This is nice, but there's an Absorber pretty close by, and by the time that, yeah, the plus three just finished for Deer, so he's going to have an, an upgrade advantage as well. He's got more Gateways, still has more Colossus, actually, three against one, and the next attack for Deer is going to be so deadly with these four Archons in the mix as well. Yeah, and we do have a Warp in. Uh, on top of the, the cannon inside the main for Deer, but that's not going to be enough. We're going to have the major fight here. Archon's leading the charge. Three Colossus versus just the one, as Rhett said. And uh, Hasselhoff is going to try to make a big defense here. Photon Overcharge does initiate, but again, those Colossus just wailing on the poor one Colossus of Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff's using this angle to the best of his ability, and he's stemming the tide for the moment. Uh, there's not a huge amount of DPS here for Deer, so with that Nexus just kind of sitting there being a a pretty good tank slash damage dealer. It looks like, uh, can uh, has to, uh, oh, he's, not, he's gonna lose the Nexus, but he might get a couple of these Colossus. Yeah, he gets one of the Colossus and the rest is being chased away, but still, uh, Deer is still in a commanding position. 10 probes yeah. ahead, even taking a fourth base, which is already done. And he does and lose uh, that pylon inside, or excuse me, the, the warp prism inside the main as well. Yeah. Poor Hasselbs did get five probe skills, but it's nothing compared to the 22. And there we go, GG. What a man and Deer is the second player to advance to tomorrow's final bracket. Hyun and Deer together make it and well played by Hasselops. He came really, really close and he played almost the same as Deer, not not exact just a tiny little bit worse. Yeah. And unfortunately in that matchup, that tiny little bit worse makes it look really bad. But uh, as you were saying, big tip of the hat to, to Hasselops. He brought it down to the final series. He beat Leenok, he beat Jadong, he was hanging with Deer. Uh, this is a tournament he can look at and smile. He'll have some beers of celebration tomorrow as he cheers on, like you said, his teammate, Deer, uh, who's a real contender for that $100,000. He's, he's uh, one of the absolute best players on the planet. So Hyun, a little bit of an upset. I think people probably would have favored a, a Lee Knock or Jadong ahead of him in terms of predictions to make it out. But Hyun was right up there. If he wasn't in your top four to, to make it out of that bracket, then you had something crazy going on. But he ended up being the most dominant force in that open bracket, and that was incredible. So Yeah, and I think Lee Nock and, and Jadong, the big losers for today. Uh, sadly, they didn't make it, but I still really enjoyed casting all their games, and we saw some great games today, and it's been a really do long day, but definitely worth it uh, oh, yeah. for us to cast. And big. now we're going to head straight into the main event bracket, which I think is the first time it's been released, Yeah, and we'll see all the, the big matchups, so let's bring that out. Burm, burm, burm. All right, so it's just very much so from the top. CJ Hero taking on Hyun uh, in that PVZ Sam Give versus prediction. MC. Give predictions okay, for prediction, every round. Hyun 2-1. Yeah, after today, I don't know. I Normally, I would say Hero, but Hyun looks so uh, crushing today that, yeah, he's gonna. I'm going to go with 2-1 for him as well. Okay. San MC, what do you think? Uh, San 2-0. Just have yeah. him higher in higher regard than MC. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yes, San is on paper, in my opinion, the better player right now, but MC is MC. 
The day I see him losing a round of 16, I don't know. So I'm going to pick MC2-1. Uh, Polt Naniwa. That's a good matchup. I mean, normally that would be really close, but Naniwa, of course, said that he has not been playing, so going to have to give the edge to Polt here, who's recently just yeah. been full-time in America. He's done with his studies and he's only on playing StarCraft, so yeah. he's been... He already did really well at I'm, I Am Cologne uh, last time, and his TVP looked sick, so... It's a, it's a missed him. opportunity. If Naniwa was in his old form and in his usual self, this would be a fantastic match, but yeah, he, he came out and said in his, fa his fan page he hasn't played for over a month, so Polt pretty easily 2-0. Dear Liquid Hero, what do you think? Uh, I think that's a very, very close match. Uh, they also played at BlizzCon, and, and Deer just barely won. And honestly, I think Deer looks very good PvP, but Hero, of course, he can beat anyone. So I think it'll be pretty much 50-50. Interesting political pick from you. Uh, okay. Uh, I think it'll be Deer 2-1, but I agree with you. It could go either way. Uh, Revival Jokji. Jokji has looked absolutely insane playing uh, over here and tearing it up a little bit. And Revival is has been a little bit quiet, obviously, uh, recently joining... What did he join? Uh, I think CM Storm. Yes. Yes. Thank you. He joins Polt there. Uh, I'm going to have to pick Jokji, probably 2-0, uh, but maybe 2-1, and uh, I'll be happy to see my buddy Revival. I think I agree with that uh, for sure. Like, Jokji is probably the favorite there. But Revival, you never know. If he's been practicing nonstop, he could come out really strong. Like, sometimes he'll just do that and win tournaments. Yeah. But like every one of these matchups is so close, it could really go either way. Like Oz against SOS, great matchup. Another PVP. Yeah. yeah, I like both these players. Really, really fun. Very creative players. Uh, SOS, of course, on paper is the much more accomplished and uh, tournament savvy player. Oz has had some amazing tournament performances, but SOS is the more consistent turnout protoss. So. Uh, your gut has to say SOS, um, but I look at that, especially with the nature of PvP, and say that Oz has a very good chance at uh, a small upset there, I would say. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Then we have uh, Liquid Teja versus Stardust, and I think this, out of all the matchups, I probably have to give Teja the edge the mm -hmm. most in this matchup. Even though Stardust, uh, as well, he's been kind of on fire. He's been doing really well at Assembly. Then he did really well at I Am Cologne as well until he lost. Uh, but uh, I think Teja, if he brings his top form he should be able to make it through here, probably two to one. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Tage is one of those players where it doesn't matter what tournament he enters. If he's in his top form, he's one of the three best players in that tournament. Uh, but sometimes he gets bounced out by some weird guys, and Stardust is, if anything, certainly a weird guy that is capable of beating a Tage. So Tage certainly is the favorite. I would pick even a 2-0. But if Stardust bopped him in some zonky weird way tomorrow, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. Uh, what about the newcomer Rogue versus uh, the young man Life? Yeah, this is a sick matchup because like everyone's been saying that Rogue is like one of the best Korean Zergs, and he's been apparently been dominating the Korean ladder. And then of course Life, probably he's he made it to the round of eight GSL in this season, so he's looking really really, really hot. Even though his last year was not the best, he looks like he's back on form, and he's gonna have to prove it immediately playing against Rogue, who's kind of like the unknown underdog, but everyone knows that he's really skilled. So this one also hard to predict, but I think I'll go with two one for Life. Okay, I would probably pick the same. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the open bracket. Thank you so much for hanging out with us all day long. We're going to take a shower. We're going to sleep. We're going to rest up. And then we're going to fly to Poland to join our friends and uh, the rest of the crew where we will be bringing you an amazing tournament. It's going to be the round of 16 tomorrow. I cannot wait. Rhett, any parting words? Yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, sticking out with us for 10 hours. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I had fun with you, Jeff. Uh, first time casting yeah, together. Too, and. I can't wait for the rest of the tournament to unfold. This was just the beginning, and it's only going to get better. So it's really exciting uh, for everybody, I think. It's kind of fun that it's spread out across four days. It lets you guys soak up and, and digest and talk about all the matchups. And, and with $100,000 to the winner only, uh, I feel like it deserves that amount of attention. So, again, big shout-out to uh, ESL and IEM and all their wonderful sponsors for bringing us out here and for putting the show on. And uh, I'm really excited to go see Poland. Never been there. I've heard great things. I can't wait. Uh, guys, we had a lot of fun. We laughed, we cried, we almost fell asleep. But in the end of the day, it's going to be Hyun moving on with well Deer. Deer. Yes. And uh, we saw that round of 16 bracket. It's stacked. So we will see you guys bright and early tomorrow. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot, and see you soon.